sport motorcycle, touring motorcycle. Which one do I prefer and why? Intro. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Good, good, good. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me. You notice by now, or at least you should. For those of you that have never been here before, welcome to the channel. My name's Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. Did a wonderful 22 year career with the NYPD, 15 of those years spent with the elite NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle unit. The name of this channel is Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle. And on this channel, that's primarily the focus. I want to help you be the boss of your motorcycle. And the way I do that is I go over slow speed motorcycle operation. That's operating your motorcycle between one and 10 miles per hour. That's the range of speed that most motorcycle riders are very uncomfortable with because that's when it's all on you. One to 10 miles per hour. That's when you have to be the boss of your motorcycle to operate one of these machines at slow speeds with your feet up in control and confident. All right. I also do practice sessions, private lessons. Check out my website for more information on that. And I do product reviews, product installs, and anything and everything that I feel would be helpful or beneficial to you guys, I'm always going to share it. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about which style motorcycle I prefer, a touring motorcycle or a sport motorcycle. And I'm also going to tell you, obviously, why I prefer that style of motorcycle. So let's get right into it. It's not going to be a surprise to anybody that's been on this channel before, but if you're new to this channel, I'm going to let you know a touring type motorcycle is my preference. That's the preferred motorcycle I prefer to ride, okay? This is my 2019 CVO Street Glide. I have three other touring motorcycles. I have a 2021 Road Glide CVO. I have a 2021 Limited CVO. And I have a 2019 Road King Special. Um, and this is my girl Scarlett. Scarlett is a 2015 Honda CB1000R. And she's my sport motorcycle. So you might say, well, why would you get a sport motorcycle if this is your preferred ride? So again, I said preferred. If I have a choice between the two, I'm gonna choose this one. I actually just bought this motorcycle because I wanna go over slow speed motorcycle operation on a sport motorcycle. I say all the time that the rules don't change, but it's one thing for you guys to hear me say it, and it's another thing for you guys to see it. So I am gonna be doing a video taking Scarlet through my practice course, one through nine, and the bonus, all right? Um, and uh, that'll be coming out soon, guys, and as soon as it comes out. That's why I always say, guys, I always ask you to please subscribe to the channel. All right, it helps me out. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I ask you to like the video, share, but make sure you click that notification bell and switch it to all. And that way, whenever I put out a new video, bam, you get notified that it's there and you can go and you can watch it. All right, so let's get into it. Yes, you know I like this more. Let's talk about why I like this motorcycle more. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the comfort. This motorcycle is a lot more comfortable to ride on than this motorcycle. 
Now, and again, I, let me start out by saying this is not an apples to apples comparison, obviously. This is just me sharing with you which style of motorcycle I prefer and why. It's all based on me, my opinion, and that's it. Okay, some stuff is factually based, like the Comfort. Clearly, this is a touring type motorcycle. It's meant to ride hundreds and hundreds of miles. That's not the purpose of this style of motorcycle. It's not to say it's impossible to do, but you're gonna be a lot more comfortable on this type of motorcycle than this type. Let's look at a few things side by side. All right, so if we look at the touring motorcycle, now this is a, a low profile seat, dominator seat. Um, it also has an option to have, obviously it came with a seat that has a seat for the passenger, right? You can put a backrest on it. There's a lot of stuff you can do. It's already gonna be more comfortable than that motorcycle, right? But the fact that you can add stuff to make it even more comfortable just adds to the appeal of the comfort. So with this style of motorcycle, you're in an upright seated position. You can have your feet flat right out in front of you, or you can stretch out even more with highway pegs, right? Whereas a sport style motorcycle, you know, your, your, your feet are almost behind you on the peg, right? And that's it. You know, there's not, that's not, not many other options for your feet that I'm aware of, but either way, you're more leaned forward with the style of handlebars and the seat with the tank right up on you. So it's, it's, it's a different, different style of riding, I know, but I'm letting you know why I prefer a touring type motorcycle. And that comfort extends to your passenger too. I don't have a passenger seat on here, but even if I put a pillion on there, it's gonna be more comfortable than this. And with this, you, you better hold on because that's it. Whereas on a touring type motorcycle, you put a sissy bar on there or a tour pack and the passenger can relax. They don't even have to hold on because they have something to put their back against. So point number one, comfort. I think that's a no brainer. Number two, technology. Yeah, I have a screen right here. I have a, you know, a digital readout of a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of technology. There's GPS, there's a radio, there's multiple speakers. I have all of that on here. Obviously on my sport motorcycle, not so much, right? That's pretty much it right there. So right, that's a quick one. Okay, third, and this one is another one that's not my opinion, it's just a fact. Storage. I have um, saddlebags and I have stretch saddlebags. So I have plenty of storage on here. And I have the option, which I do have it in the garage, to have a tour pack on here, which is just more storage. On this motorcycle, you're gonna have on a book bag, I'm guaranteeing you, some kind of bag. Either you're gonna have something on your tank or you're gonna have a book bag. And if it's hot, the last thing you want on your back is a book bag, right? I think this, well, actually, I'm not gonna say I think, I know, I don't even know how to get into it, but there's some storage under this seat. And that's pretty much it as it pertains to the storage. Next, light options. Obviously, you have way more options on a touring motorcycle to put lights than you do on a sport motorcycle and i want you guys to um keep in mind that i'm not i'm saying touring motorcycle not just harley davidson I'm, I'm talking about a touring motorcycle versus a sport motorcycle i don't have anything other than a harley davidson as it pertains to a touring motorcycle so that's all i can talk about but either way no matter what kind of touring motorcycle you're riding you're going to have more options for lights because you have more surface space it's that simple okay safety all right now this is a big one for me guys big one See these right here? Engine guards. See these right here? Saddlebag guards. Now I've already released a video guys showing you that me, showing you me dropping this motorcycle in the parking lot in New Jersey, slipping on some oil and the motorcycle just sliding on the engine guard and the saddlebag guard. And then once, once it came to rest, I put my feet down. Right? That's when you put your foot down. When it comes to rest, don't put your foot out as it's falling. I'm talking about with a touring motorcycle, right? What that lets me know is if you're riding a sport motorcycle, let me tell you something. The first time I test rode Scarlet, that's when I really felt like, oh crap, if I happen to fall on this motorcycle, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna be on me when I fall. There's no engine guards, there's no saddlebag guards, there's no guards. So even if you get those, um, I think I forgot what they're called, but there's something you could put on the side of these motorcycles. Those just protect the motorcycle. They don't protect you, right? So I don't have to go too much in the detail with that. It's another thing that's just a fact. This touring motorcycle 
It's gonna provide you, not only your motorcycle with more with protection, but it's also gonna protect you, right? Okay, enough said about that. Next, tank size. Again, that's a touring motorcycle, so it's meant to ride long distances. Stands to reason it's gonna have a larger tank. This motorcycle has a baby tank, as they call them. So you're obviously gonna be filling this motorcycle up before you have to fill up that motorcycle, all right? Another thing that's a fact. Okay, value. So obviously, the touring motorcycle is gonna give you more value for your money because it costs more, right? It, especially if it's a Harley Davidson. We all know Harley Davidsons hold their value um, very well, very well. Um, and speaking of cost, Yes, you're gonna pay more money for a touring motorcycle than you will for a sport motorcycle. Now again, yes, there are some sport motorcycles that are gonna cost more than certain touring motorcycles. So I'm not talking about that. The point I'm trying to make is, I'll give you a perfect example, Harley Davidson. Now the demographic for Harley Davidson motorcycles are usually um, men 45 years of age and older. Why is that? Well, my theory is, it's because it's an expensive motorcycle. And you know, you need time in your life to get financially stable enough to be able to really afford one of these, right? So if you don't have the means to get something like that, then that's where this comes in. And this is a lot of reasons why younger people ride these motorcycles and learn how to ride on these types of motorcycles first because they're less expensive, right? That's one reason. Um, okay, and lastly guys, lastly, I'm gonna talk about turning the motorcycle, turning it, using maneuverability at slow speeds, turning the motorcycle. So once again, this is something that's not my opinion, it's a fact. This motorcycle has a much better turning radius than this motorcycle. And this motorcycle is meant to go fast, it's meant for speed. So turning the handlebars, that's it, right? That's the furthest it's gonna go. Whereas the Harley Davidson, it's gonna turn all the way, right? So again, this motorcycle has a better lean radius, right? Definitely has a more of a lean radius than the Harley Davidson. And you're gonna need that lean, that extra lean, to compensate for the lack of turning in the handlebar at slow speeds I'm talking about, all right? So clearly this one's faster, but I say it all the time, if you buy one of these motorcycles, and I'm talking about the majority of people, specifically I'm referring to myself, you don't buy these for speed, right? It's a, it's a, it's a touring type motorcycle. It doesn't mean you wanna be going, you know, 50 miles per hour at, a, at the top speed, but you don't buy it for speed. This is meant for speed. This is heavier, which for me actually feels, I feel more comfortable with it, but that's because I'm accustomed to it. So anyway, guys, that's gonna do it. That's just me sharing this with you as far as what motorcycle style I prefer. Again, for you guys that are preloaders and VI preloaders, not a surprise for those of you that are new to the channel. All right, now you know, all right? Just a preference, just my personal preference. I don't have anything against anybody that rides anything other than a touring motorcycle. I just don't. You guys know all I care about is that you know what you're doing on the type of motorcycle that you're riding, okay? All I care is that you know how to ride it. That's what I'll say, because the rules don't change. I say that all the time. Whether you're riding a touring motorcycle or a sport motorcycle. You saw when I pulled out of my garage, right? That's exercise number four. All of the rules that I do on my touring motorcycle, I did the same thing on my sport motorcycle. Step number one, I made sure I was in first gear. Step number two, I covered the rear brake. Step number three, I preload and keep it loaded. Step number four, I slowly released the clutch into the friction zone. And step number five, as soon as that motorcycle started to move, I picked up my foot, head and eyes, went where I was going. Nothing changes, right? Nothing changes. And the sooner we can kind of grasp that concept and apply it to when you're riding, this is gonna be so, so easy. All right, guys, listen, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so, all right? Do it right now before you forget, all right? It definitely helps out this channel. I know this channel helps out a lot of people. That's all I ask in return, all right? Hit the like button, share, and again, hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified when a new video comes out. All right, guys? Now, I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm talking about this, since you guys always hear me talking about that. And the reason I'm saying I'm talking about this is because I need to get through your head. Practice, 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 practice. Talking about slow speed, one to 10 miles per hour. Preload and keep it loaded and practice, practice, practice some more. Seat time does not equal practice time. 
I don't care how many miles you've ridden. I don't care how many years you've ridden. I don't care what kind of motorcycle you ride. If you're still putting your feet out every time you slow down, if your heart rate goes up every time you have to come to a stop, you are the same as a brand new motorcycle rider, skill-wise, at slow speeds, all right? Let that roll around in your head. You should think about that. It should bother you, and I want you to do something about it. Remember, this is not about competition. This is not a popularity contest or anything like that. It's about being safe and being knowledgeable on how to ride one of these machines. All right, guys, don't forget, I got a video coming out soon where I'm gonna be taking Scarlet through my practice course, slow speed, one through nine, and a bonus. Um, practice up on it and get acclimated to it, and I already know it's possible because the rules don't change. It's just a matter of going out and applying it, and I wanna share that with you guys. All right, guys? All right, and remember, guys, if you have time to ride, you have time to practice. Until next time, guys.